Welcome, this is Jay Larson, uh, CEO of the Idaho Technology Council. Thank you for joining us for today's Innovation Matters um, on the 24th of September, 2020. Um, first thought for this today is to be able to think to change before you have to, and that was a quote that was given by Jack Welch, uh, used to be the CEO of uh, General Electric. And I think there's a, a really big point here and that is uh, options and opportunity are sometimes tied to change. And if we have to wait so long, then change and opportunity are reduced and, and we, we have, have to adapt to that as opposed to what's trying to change. change. So, so that's, that's just a thought, thought today. Uh, we, we have, have a great lineup, lineup today. today. We've, We've got, got uh, John Sibber, a Director of Corporate Information Technology at Boise Cascade. He'll be joining us. But first, we're going to have Jay Reynolds. Chief Technology Officer for HealthWise, um, and also, also as well as Information Security Officer in HealthWise. So, uh, uh, Jay Reynolds, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Jay, absolutely. Uh, so, this is uh, kind of um, fun. We know that uh, um, HealthWise has been very uh, instrumental and revolutionary in a lot of ways with healthcare information and the delivery of it. I, you and I spoke about uh, a month ago, and I mentioned that when my, my wife was working at Boise Cascade, I remember she came home with a book. And if I was in my office and we didn't have COVID-19, I would be sharing this book with you right now. I'd be holding it up. But it was a, an it was a deal that was about uh, almost an inch and a half, two inches thick. It was a big book that talked about all the things. So if I wanted to turn around and open up a deal of strep throat, I could quickly open it up and talk about what it is and the best way to treat it and all those type of things. It was a book. Now things have changed so much. Today, uh, where how have things changed so much with uh, uh, HealthWise and the delivery uh, of information within the healthcare arena? Yeah, it's it's interesting how things come full circle because when HealthWise was uh, printing those books. Our mission has stayed the same for the 45 years. Uh, it's always been to help people make better health decisions. And in the early days before the internet, uh, the printed books were the way that we could best get health information into the hands of consumers. Uh, when the internet took off, uh, we saw new opportunities uh, to be able to deliver an electronic version of health education through uh, payers and providers primarily. We had um, an online version of our content that people could also search through and things like that. But primarily we started delivering through those two, um, those two areas. And now with, um, with the, the explosion of mobile and, and uh, wearables and uh, remote monitoring, the, the, the ability for uh, health education to be delivered directly to consumers is growing again. And so, you know, you think of it as being able to take what we started with by delivering these books to uh, directly to consumers. Now we can start delivering health education directly to consumers again, not having to necessarily go through payers and providers uh, to do so. It, those are still options, but uh, it's interesting how the options have gone back to being able to deliver directly to consumers. Is, uh, so tell us a little bit about, you know, you just mentioned a little bit about healthcare's mission and uh, as healthcare as a, I mean, as HealthWise's mission, but HealthWise is also a nonprofit, right? So talk about the unique nature of what, uh, uh, how healthcare, I mean, how HealthWise was founded and its mission and a little bit more about what, what you're doing today with HealthWise. Well, um, you know, a mission, oriented company, it, it gives us certain flexibilities, but I think if you were in inside the company on a, on a daily basis, you probably wouldn't notice a whole lot of difference in the day-to-day -day operations, but um, we don't have a lot of influence from outside investors over the types of content that we, we deliver, the types of products mm -hmm. that we create to deliver our content. Um, so we can do so, uh, we, can, we can have a lot of independence because of that. So we go out and we look for uh, opportunities where there are gaps in uh, health education and we focus on building uh, the content to fill those gaps and there aren't any uh, 
there's no financial pressure to do things uh, in a certain way. And that's, that's pretty unique. And it, uh, um, let's see, you know, we don't have any constraints over who we can focus on as well. You know, we can uh, focus on different types of markets. Um, you know, we've, you know, I think that's probably pretty much it. <laughs> And, and that's a great, that's a, um, um, because you really are delivering some of the top products and, and really a big influencer for the way that information is distributed um, with healthcare. So if, um, if you can say, so Don Camper is the founder of HealthWise. Don Camper is on the Idaho Technology Council Hall of Fame, uh, an amazing individual. Um, if you could say, why did Don... I, I, maybe I just find this not really a big issue, but why did Don decide to do this as, as a nonprofit as opposed to a for-profit company? I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, I think he wanted that independence and the flexibility. He didn't want to be influenced by the outside investor pressure that you, you can have if, you, if you're a for-profit company. Yeah, it, it seems like that would be a big advantage as well as uh, probably uh, maybe some of the motives that Don used to have. I know we'd have to get Don on here at some point to talk about that because I think it's interesting. Um, if I, the, the other part is, is really going back to Don a little bit is that I think that for years, um, HealthWise has been viewed as one of the top places to work because you have such a unique culture. Um, how big is culture to the HealthWise company? That's oh, huge. Um, you know, we've we, we've always had sort of an open, collaborative culture. You know, I think that that's always been one of our main focuses. Um, it doesn't mean that we haven't suffered a little bit here and there. So a lot of the the the, the founding leadership of Healthwise um, retired several years ago, including Don. And we have an entirely new leadership team today compared to 10 years ago. Um, and in that transition, you had the, the recession and uh, we had meaningful use and um, we've built products and we've aged out products and we've, uh, we've built some winners and we built some losers. And uh, over, over that period of time, our product portfolio has gotten pretty large. Uh, and it's some of it is a little bit aged, and we're looking for ways to um, to to build, build new products. And we've got a plan for uh, several new value streams that we're focused on. Uh, but that's a big transition when leadership uh, sort of cycles out and new leadership comes in. And so throughout that process, we try to 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 make a one of our main focuses, how to preserve the culture of openness and collaboration. People can bring their dogs to work. And if you've ever been in the, the HealthWise bu building, it's a pretty unique building to be in. Um, but we, we struggled for a few years uh, while we went through that transition. But I think staying conscious of the culture brought us back to our roots. And we've really sort of refocused on what are the things that made HealthWise successful in the beginning and what are the things we need to do to make uh, HealthWise successful over the next 10 years. Is that, I will say that you're right, the culture is amazing. And I think I had more friends, meaning dogs, when I walked through a couple meetings that I've had in HealthWise and I've got, uh, and it was just amazing, uh, the culture and the environment has been fantastic. So, so Jay, let's shift a little bit to this, this idea of, of technology and artificial intelligence and these type of things. How will these uh, uh, new technologies that you're looking at, how's that gonna help you formulate new products and services or, or what's what's the new uh, the new way of looking at healthcare with respect to artificial intelligence? Um, that's a huge question. I could talk about that for hours. Um, so there are, there's so much changing uh, in in healthcare all the time. There's so much opportunity. Um, you know, the, the healthcare industry I think is 3.6 trillion dollar industry in the United States, and uh, especially over the last year with the pandemic, seeing how um, big tech has become more involved, and they've been involved for years, but really seeing their response to the pandemic, um, 
it's it's interesting to see how and for me to articulate how AI is having an effect, I, I, I think a lot about how big tech is responding, especially the different types of big tech. So, and I, and I think about the five main ones, there's, there's Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Google, um, and they're all taking a slightly different approach, but uh, health-wise, and I'll I just uh, talk a little bit about what they're doing, because, you know, Microsoft is, is uh, leveraging the um, the commercial space, so it's it's leveraging Office 365 and its ability to deliver um, solutions through its existing platform of capabilities, Office 365, Dynamics, and Microsoft Azure. Um, Facebook is kind of connecting consumers with consumers and consumers with providers. You know, Amazon's leveraging their infrastructure and they're leveraging their marketplace to be able to sell prescription services and things. Um, uh, who did I miss there? Uh, Google is is leveraging AI to create new search experiences uh, and things like that. And, and Apple is is creating the the uh, patient health record of the, uh, on individual phones. So they're they're all taking they're all using data in in one way and providing services and capabilities to 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 target healthcare in a slightly unique way. Um, and Healthwise's mission to help people make better health decisions. You could think of big tech's uh, influence on healthcare as being um, a threat, but when you look at the landscape of how they're all, diff the, the, the different approaches that they're all taking to getting involved in healthcare, um, there's a basically a channel within each for HealthWise to provide health education and to provide it to a number of people that we could never do on our own. So it's a huge opportunity for us. So HealthWise um, is, is focusing on how to um, create, organize, and deliver health education um, in, in many different ways, in unknown ways. And so we want to make our content delivery as flexible and easy to integrate and discoverable as, as possible. And so uh, what that means right now uh, is that we're, we're looking at our systems and our ability to uh, search, find, discover content and apply AI in order to be able to surface the right content at the right time in the right context, um, wherever, whatever setting that might be so that we can uh, take advantage of the different types of opportunities that are coming up as big tech uh, comes out with their solutions. The submission is, uh, I think, uh, create, organize, and deliver, right? Right. So if you said those three, and then you look at, um, how, you just mentioned that, how, how's it going to impact the delivery system uh, that we're getting? Because I know that we went from the book, you know, where we are to, today. Do, what's the future look like when it comes down to delivery of the, of the content? Well, so you, um, you see, for example, um, Amazon released their Amazon Comprehend Medical Service, which is um, a, a set of services that allow you to sort of navigate and use natural language processing AI to um, map different medical terms together. So you can basically give it a, a, a blurb of medical text or a medical image, and it will pull out the drugs or the conditions and things like that and, and create a, a mapping of those things. And, and Microsoft is, um, has a similar service that they just released over the summer. Uh, and um, in order to deliver uh, health information more effectively, we have to find ways to um, create those mappings in a kind of a automated and dynamic way. So as we write new content, we get new code sets or we get new synonyms that it, it feeds into a system that can be um, mapped to related uh, content or related medical terms or related drugs or other um, types of information in an automated way. So um, when you have a medical condition come up on your, your Apple Watch or something like that, the, the health information that's related to that condition is available right at that moment. What, what I'm hearing you say about this, uh, Jay, is that you really have the opportunity to have 
more immediate information. Uh, you're going to have more uh, detailed information, and it will help you as the consumer or the person that needs to manage their healthcare more engaged in that process, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, you, you look at what what Apple Health is is doing when you look at the health kit, for example, when you look at the the, the types of data that it's starting to aggregate when you uh, integrate different types of apps and when you integrate it with a healthcare system, you just see this big dump of data. You open up Apple Health Kit, and it doesn't really provide a lot of education. Um, we want to provide the education that makes sense of the data that you see in an app like Apple Health Kit. And, and at the right time, uh, a lot of people search, they Google medical conditions to try to learn about them um, when they want that information. But um, it would be better if we could surface the information at the moment in time when someone needs it. So we eliminate the step of them searching for it and we just present it to them when they need it. Anticipating what the needs are going to be using that artificial intelligence to help gather more information, have it more immediate uh, reached uh, the, the end consumer on that. That's uh, actually, I, I think that's, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think that as you look at what's going to be taking place uh, in the future, it seems like um, we're going to be responsible for a lot more for our healthcare. I know that's been a big, a big drive of everything over the last 10 years. But it's going to be even more important, and I think health-wise, uh, I love what you said is is more is a very important. You're, you're really an education arm on that whole piece, and will be even more vital to helping us make decisions with respect to our own healthcare. Right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jay, that's this has been awesome. I know uh, we're going to be doing some more work on. Uh, um, as the Idaho Technology Council will is called IBAM Idaho Bio Alliance for Medicine. I don't know HealthWise will be a big uh, big player in that. And um, any any other thoughts about what the future looks like for uh, healthcare right now? Uh, any any uh, any Jetson or Star Trek thing that's going to be happening? Oh, it's hard to say. You know, I don't. I, I, there, there's I have lots of ideas, and who knows if any of them are right, but. Um, I, what I think is really interesting is how um, how more of the uh, the patient record is in the hands of the of the patient. And it's, that the, the trend is moving in that direction, and um, I hope that continues. I think that it will continue, and you know, hopefully, in ten years, you see patient record wholly owned by the patient, and they can distribute their information in any way they want and, you know, share it with whoever they want, and they can provide, um, they can, they can get health information uh, right as they need it, and, and health education maybe isn't, isn't strictly text-based or video-based, um, uh, who knows, you know, maybe it's neural implants at that point, I don't know, but um, it's, yeah. it's, it, <laughs> It's interesting to, to go ahead. No, I was going to say it's going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of technology advances. But at the heart of what you're saying is that having those inf the information directly uh, managed by the the patient or the individual, right? That's going to be the key that takes place. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of technology that comes uh, because medicine has changed and advanced so much. And probably the next ten years, there's going to be a significant advances in in um, you know, delivery systems for healthcare and other type of solutions, but uh, it still needs to be managed by the end, end consumer itself and the end patient, right? Correct. Yeah, ideally. Yeah. Well, Jay, thanks for taking time. We're, we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk uh, as we continue to have things evolve within the healthcare arena and those type of things. We'd love to be able to have you on in the future and talk a little bit more about uh, what's what's happening uh, with HealthWise, and uh, we really appreciate you being on Innovation Matters. Sure. Thank you again for having me. All right. Thanks, Jay. Uh, we now get the chance to be able to make shifts uh, over to John Stifler with Boise Cascade. John, welcome to Innovation Matters. Thank you, Jay. Looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, well, I am too, but uh, let everybody know uh, that John Stifler is a, uh, uh, a magnificent 
tennis player, so keep your eye on. Uh, he might be approaching uh, Wimbledon next year. I don't know, but uh, I know it, John. You played really well. And I get to see you on the tennis courts occasionally, so it's great. So, um, Thanks. John, Thanks. over to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John, at a, at a high level, talk about how Boise Cascade uh, transitioned from what well, when I was growing up, I knew it, the Boise Cascade Corporation, the John Ferry all these type of things that took place. And then there was a whole bunch of, it's, it's a new company, obviously, over the Boise Cascade Company. Uh, talk about that and talk about uh, your new CEO as of, I think, January 1st, Nate Jorgensen. Sure, thanks, Jay. Um, I would start that, you know, for people that haven't lived in Boise for a long time, uh, Boise Cascade has been around uh, for a very long time. Uh, Boise Cascade Corporation was founded in 1957 with the merger of the Boise Payette Lumber Company in Boise, Idaho, and then the Cascade Lumber Company in Yakima, Washington. So you go back, our roots even go further back than that. Uh, you know, we had sawmills in, at Barber Park here in Boise in Southeast Boise. We had a sawmill in Horseshoe Band. We had a sawmill in Cascade, Idaho even in McCall, Idaho, and Council, Idaho. And as you go up the Payette River, you can see the uh, old railroad system used to take green lumber bars down to be finished in uh, Emmett, Idaho. So we have a strong heritage in this community, community and are very proud of that. Um, after the, the corporation started in 50, 1957, um, Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, it grew as a, a paper and forest products industry company. And uh, it really diversified into a conglomerate of uh, many different businesses. And uh, by the 19, end of the 1980s, it was really focused on paper and paper related products, building products and office products. And we had uh, 3 million acres of timberlands across the United States. Um, but things changed in, in uh, 2003, and it was really the time uh, we merged with Office Max, so the large retail office products uh, stationary business. And then in the next year, the company was split into two pieces. The Boise Cascade Corporation became Office Max, and the uh, forest products side of the business, the paper products, the building products, and the timberlands were sold to a private equity firm out of uh, Chicago, Madison Dearborn. And then we became Boise Cascade LLC at the time. So then you fast forward uh, four more years in 2008, uh, Madison Dearborn took the, the uh, paper side of the business public. And at that point, the public company became Boise Inc. And the wood products and building materials distribution side of the business uh, stayed as Boise Cascade LLC. So for people that were around at that time, they lost track of Boise Cascade. They really then heard of Boise Inc. So um, in 2013, as uh, the business started strengthening in uh, building products, uh, Madison Dearborn took Boise Cascade LLC public in an IPO and we became Boise Cascade Company. So Jay, that started uh, that transition from corporation as you knew it when you were young to then Boise Cascade Company in 2013. Um, at that point, mm. as a, go ahead, no, I was going to say, so is Boise, is Boise Inc. still in, in existence? Uh, Boise Cascade, uh, Boise Inc. was acquired by uh, Packaging Corporation of America out of uh, Chicago. Okay, right. so they, they are part of uh, okay. their company now. Um, but in 2013, uh, we brought our, uh, started talking about bringing our shared services that the two companies had shared before back into our company. And so I got in my role in um, 2014 uh, with uh, the mission of bringing or transitioning IT back into our company. And so from uh, 
the end of 2014 to now, uh, I've led the uh, corporate IT side, which handles the um, enterprise applications and, and the uh, corporate uh, function for uh, corporate IT, corporate departments. You know, what, you know, I think that John, what I think is the most amazing thing about this right now is that this, um, this is an amazing company that has, um, I don't, it's, it's kind of like the Albertsons, uh, Albertsons, uh, and Albertsons companies, you know, how they, uh, they, it's a different company, but yet it's kind of like a Renaissance in a lot of ways where we, you see this, this, this thing that had great tradition and great talent has come back underneath a different leadership, a different organization, different company. And now they're a multi-billion dollar company, which, which you are, right? right. Um, that's now here, here in, back in, I mean, in Boise and flourishing. Um, in fact, in I, fact I, I think I, you guys, you guys have had great growth over the last several years. Last several years. Uh, so it's an amazing how, how this is. I mean, what, this is uh, what I think sometimes is that we don't, we don't take for granted, but we, we take, take for granted, granted sometimes the impact that a company like Boise, like Boise Cascade has had. Uh, most people don't know about how, um, about how this great, this wonderful story that you just described. Well, and, and I would say, that, you know, um, just listening to uh, Jay earlier sure. that when you talk culture and, and with our new CEO, Nate Jorgensen, and, and our past heritage, um, our culture has been consistent through the years, and it really focuses on integrity, safety, respect, and the pursuit of excellence. And um, I guess I'm a testimony to seeing that culture because for over 33 years being part of the company, that is one thing that has not changed. And I'm very proud of the culture uh, and how we, uh, how we do business. So uh, um, pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, that's that is fantastic. So, um, and congratulations! I didn't know you've been there for thirty-three years. That's a that's a, you've seen a lot of things, a lot of uh, a lot of positive things that have taken place because of that. So let's let's change that a little bit, John. Talk to us about how technology plays a major role in Boise at Boise Cascade. And and Jay, when people ask me that, I always start out that. Um, the old saying being IT needs to be business driven. Um, IT at Boise Cascade is very driven and it's the way we're organized. Um, our central, like I mentioned, our central or enterprise application teams report to me, but the business specific applications and the uh, location infrastructures, they report up through the operations. So what does that do for us? It makes us very business driven and, you know, I want to use the buzzword agile because you're able to react to the business needs much more quickly. We saw that during the, the start of the pandemic when our teams had to work remotely and support people working remotely. We were very successful in our agility in those times. Um, so technology plays, that's the starting point of it, it's being business driven. Then I would stress to you, uh, we're a relationship company, and that's something that hasn't changed either. And, and you know, whether it's customers, whether it's employees or associates, suppliers, or other stakeholders, um, we pride ourselves in our relationships with our stakeholders. Uh, and a good example in technology playing into that is um, the major role technology plays in our com company's engineered wood products business. So. For people that don't know, we're a leading uh, manufacturer of engineered wood products um, in the United States. And um, our services that are associated with helping um, not only manufacture those, uh, those products, but helping our customers, which are our wholesalers, our retail customers, and the builders installing those products, we have services through the supply chain to help them. And it goes anywhere from the side of architectural plans for a house, how the project management from the start of the project, all the way through um, the job packs that go out to the job sites that we produce. Um, so technology from 
having uh, order tracking software or project management software to de design and engineering software to SAW systems. And we have our own SAW systems that we put out at our customer locations and the integration of technology through that whole area. We say that we want to make it easier for the business of engineered wood products in IT. So um, that is one of our key drivers. So when you say, does technology play a major role at Boise Cascade? Yeah, we just don't produce the products. We help provide the services and help our customers put those products into the homes that uh, people build, which you know is probably the most important uh, decision that most families have to make is when they buy a home. Uh, it is, and, and it's and it's amazing that the strength of the uh, of of uh, the home building industry right now um, has been very strong in the United States, hasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, you know um, not only you see that in Boise, Idaho, but you you see that throughout the United States right now that uh, that um, our business in all the way from housing starts, which is a key driver for us, but also repair and remodeling. Um, the, the building is, industry has been very strong during the, the pandemic. Yeah, I bet that's, people have been doing a lot of, lot of uh, remodeling and other projects around the homes, haven't they, uh, that they normally might not have done. So um, this is, so talk about really, I just wanna make sure everybody knows what, what's engineering, the engineered uh, wood uh, products, what, are, what does that mean? Yeah, well, engineered wood products, uh, Really, a lot of people don't realize it, but Boise, Idaho has kind of been the, the home of a company called Trust Joyce earlier on. Um, and then Boise Cascade got into the business in the early 90s. But creating, uh, um, or traditionally you would use lump, larger lumber products like 2x12s and 2x10s to put in floor systems, for example, what we call sol solid sawn lumber. You now make, uh, you take veneer that you peel off of a log and you form those together um, and you create what's called engineered wood products or laminated veneer lumber. And that's one form of a, of a engineered wood product, but it allows you to uh, fully utilize the log much better. And then it also allows you to leverage the strengths of that log um, into higher value needs, such as um, products that will hold loads, such as refrigerators in a home or snow loads on roof systems. So we produce eye joists, laminated beams, um, and laminated veneer uh, lumber uh, products, such as beams and tall. All, all of, and all of which are technology driven I mean have been developed and uh, now with uh, the augmenting all the things you're doing behind it uh, I guess you could say that Boise Cascade is really a technology driven company and we take pride in that yes um, and, yeah. and, and a lot of people don't think of the uh, wood products in uh, building uh, products distribution uh, businesses as being technology driven but they very are they, they are and, and uh, we take pride in that well, I, you know, I, John, I think that the, uh, we're very, uh, thank you so much for all the support you give uh, to growing an innovative ecosystem in Idaho. And uh, I had the chance uh, last week to be able to meet uh, with you and your, uh, and, uh, your CEO, Nate Jorgensen. Uh, and, and I gotta I tell, you, tell you, I'm very uh, impressed with very impressed what, he with does, what he does and, uh, and, um, uh, um, and also the leadership, and also the leadership to, to uh, bring Boise to uh, Cascade, and, Cascade and, to, and, to, uh, um, um, and being here in Boise, here in Boise, to have an Idaho, have an Idaho uh, focus, uh, focus on all the things that Boise Cascade does for that. that. So thanks so for all the work, for all the work you do, and, and the innovation that Boise Cascade, Cascade brings to Idaho. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We'll continue to keep an eye on Boise Cascade again when there's stories around the area. And, a, and a, a marvelous company in Idaho. Thanks, John, for being part of the Idaho Technology Council's uh, Innovation Matters. Again, the thought we had today was about change before you have to drive innovation, change not having change drive you 
in your lives. So um, thank you very much for joining us on Innovation Matters. Uh, next week, we're going to have Andy Bender, Vice President General Manager of HP here in Boise. And he'll be talking a lot about things that are happening uh, with and through HP. Uh, again, thanks. This is Jay Larson with Idaho Technology Council. Keep you connected with industry and government because in Idaho, innovation matters. Thanks and have a great day. As we adopt to changing times where organizations and government agencies are working remotely, it is increasingly important for us to stay connected with local tech companies like CradlePoint, Truckstop.com, Spiris, FlexTrax, Idaho Central Credit Union, as well as Mayor Debbie Kling and Mayor Rebecca Cashmer. Isn't there a direct correlation usually with the goods transported across the country and the health of the economy and possibly going into a recession or something like that? Is there a direct correlation there? What's cool on the technology side, people are having to, like the webinar usage, you talk about the bandwidth that just skyrocketed. To discuss what Idaho's economy and government leaders are doing to ensure Idaho's economy weathers the storm. Idahoans also have a culture of taking care of each other. We have a culture that, that, that uh, includes doing things uh, intelligently and, and the right way. And I think that's part of what's going to see us through. So. Yeah, so I should not just limit it to the United States, to the world. That is fantastic. Yeah, I don't want you to sell us short, Jay. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. This is Jay Larson with the Idaho Technology Council, keeping you connected with industry and government because in Idaho, Innovation matters. Innovation matters. Innovation matters. Thank you all and be safe out there.